Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon. And today we're coming to you from deep in the heart of the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> and we're talking RV maintenance. We're going to give you five key principles of RV maintenance to keep your rig in great running order. Principle number one, and this will come as no shock to anyone, but it is clean. Clean it all. Clean everything you can clean. So let's start with cleaning the roof. Uh, I'll use a Dawn detergent like this because it removes all the grease, tar, things that are going to stick to the roof. Uh, so when I do my inspection, it's nice and clean. Lots of water. In this case, I'll use a wash brush, a soft bristle, so it's not going to cause any damage. Uh, if you have to go a little bit more aggressive, you can use a wash mitt and scrub the, uh, scrub the roof surface with that. And in uh, our case recently, uh, washing the roof of the Airstream, I had to use a Scotch-Brite pad. Now be careful with this as it's a little more uh, abrasive. Okay, so if you're washing your fifth wheel that has a rubber roof or a travel trailer with a rubber, rubber roof, there are products that clean that rubber material and it might be superior to something like this. So check and see what your dealer recommends. Uh, using a brush, a soft brush like this, especially around the vents, anywhere where the roof was cut to uh, install some kind of roof vent or uh, a cover or something like that. You want to get it really clean so you can inspect those seals. Lots of water and then let that dry and uh, you've got a good surface uh, to inspect for leaks. If you're up on your roof and you've got it nice and clean, I'd recommend that you don't wax the roof. Waxing the roof makes it very slippery and it's a little bit dangerous. Seal and reseal. You know, water is the great enemy of an RV's longevity. So often what happens is over time, due to road stresses, water begins to enter the coach. It can get down on the subfloor and lead to floor rot and all sorts of problems. This is what we're using on Airstream. We're also using this on other travel trailers. Uh, you put a quarter inch bead and what they do is the beads kind of blend into each other and it makes a very nice factory seal. It's good for about five years, depending on the environment that you live in. It's called lap sealant. It's self-leveling. What that means is you'll put the beads down and they'll kind of bond together and it makes a very smooth surface. So it's easy to inspect for cracks and stands up against the sun real well. Ceiling keeps the water out. So anywhere where there's a flange that sits on top of the roof, uh, there's a risk that water can get under the flange and into the coach. So by sealing it, uh, we keep that water on top of the sealant and it, and it wicks away on the roof to the drains and it stays outside of the coach. All right, principle number three is lubricate. Lube. How many times do I have to tell you people to use lube? A good location to lubricate. This is the rafter on a Zipti awning, and look how squeaky it is. Well, as you're deploying the awning and putting it away, this will keep that awning from working smoothly. So simply cleaning this, this shaft right here, and lubing it with something like Corrosion X or Bow Shield, you're good to go. That will help this awning stow away and be easy to operate. big difference much easier to operate so here's another place we can lubricate occasionally these windows stick here we're using the bone tool pull it away and listen hear that it's sticking a little bit so you want to be very careful and you want to work this tool around don't break this window it's carefully separate it now you separate the window glass from the seal lock it in place you can see here where there's dirt and different outside influences that stick the window to this rubber seal. I would clean that with a towel and some warm water, get it nice and clean and dry. Also clean the inside of this area. You can see here on the inside of the window where whatever was sticky is sticky here as well. 
So get this clean, dry, and we can put some either seal glide, which is a, like a silicone material that's more in a paste, or you can spray this with silicone. Silicone will give the, the seal a little uh, protection, it'll last longer, and it'll keep it from sticking. So when you're inside, you should simply be able to open this window with the latches and uh, the levers and lift it open. You, don't, you shouldn't need this every time you open the windows. Uh, your entry door on your Airstream, sometimes they can be difficult to close and pull closed from the inside. If it's right, it's, it's two clicks. Now I'm gonna test this when it's sitting on its wheels and the tongue, not when the stabilizer are down. You wanna have those up. So if yours is difficult to operate, it's very simple just to spray a little bit of lubrication. And I'm not talking about WD-40, but something like this, Corrosion X works well, you may already have it. Just gonna put it inside the, uh, the latch there and uh, we're gonna operate it a couple times. That screen door is gonna clip in place. There it goes. I'm gonna operate this a few times. And all of a sudden it's gonna get better. I can even pull it with one finger. Try that on yours. And when you operate this from the inside, as you're going inside at night and you close it, you grab that handle. If you have to slam the door and slam the door and you can't get the deadbolt to close because it's not in the right position, it's probably because of that latch. So give it a whirl. One of our favorite lubricating products is Bow Shield T9. <laughs> stuff was developed by the Boeing Corporation to take care of aircraft. Bow Shield actually comes in a spray formula or in drops, so that can be helpful depending on where you're needing to use them. Something else you should lubricate is your hitch ball, and we use kind of a white lithium grease to lubricate that ball. Also, your wheel bearings being repacked would be considered lubrication. Okay, let's talk about wheel bearings. Here we have a couple different examples. We have the standard wheel bearing with a, uh, a race and a wheel bearing that requires maintenance. And we have a sealed wheel bearing that folks say they don't require maintenance, but they do require inspection, okay? So this is found on later model Airstreams and other travel trailers as well. Somewhere in around 2011-ish uh, you can tell if you have this style bear bearing as there's uh, typically a yellow label that's visible uh, through the uh, spokes of the wheel. Uh, but uh, this is called an Everloop. And this is a standard bearing. Now, bearings need maintenance because as they spin around, they uh, transfer a little bit of this metal and they attract moisture and just generally need service. So depending on the use of your trailer it uh, it may be that you want to have these inspected every year uh, maybe you you don't use a trailer much and it gets inspected and the bearings are still fine there's fresh grease inside there and they have the right end play but uh, it's not something you want to overlook let's say you didn't inspect it every year but maybe you only towed six seven eight thousand miles they're they're probably okay but it's a good idea to have these inspected uh, because it gives you that peace of mind that you're not gonna have bearing failure. You're gonna take these 40,000 miles, you're probably gonna have a problem. See that? Yeah. What do you think? I think it's on its way out. Wow. Yeah. This, this wants to leave the vehicle. So we better re-secure it with some larger or additional rivets. Tighten. You need to tighten up loose screws and maybe refasten, reconnect loose panels. Well, traveling down the road is like a little earthquake, right? Everything is shaking. Uh, you hit a pothole, all that vibration transfers up through the coach and things work themselves loose. So let's talk about tightening. It's pretty basic, but there's something you should know. If you're going to use an electric drill gun like this and you put it on a screw and you hit that screw, did you tighten it? You over tighten it, right? Now, if I take a screw driver like this and I go to tighten it, this is just going to keep spinning. So essentially what I've done is I've stripped this screw. This screw 
I can loosen it and I can snug it and maybe just a tiny bit more and it's tight. I haven't pulled the threads loose from the wood. I've got a good bite. That's what I mean by tighten. I don't mean over torque. This screw, this mounting position, it's forever ruined. Unless you went with a larger screw, try to get a new bite because I've stripped it. So maybe you're not going to use a gun like this. Maybe you're going to use just a screwdriver, but you want to get it really tight, right? And you just start turning it. Essentially, I've stripped the screw now. So this screw is going to continue to work loose. And every time you go down the road, you're going to find that this whole bracket's coming loose from this, in this case, as a table. Uh, but it could be anything. It could be a counter, it could be a door. So when I say snug up a screw, it's back it off, tighten it, that's it. Now it's tight. It's good for many, many miles. The underbelly of our Airstream was loose in many places. Mm -hmm. And when those panels come loose, not only could potentially water get inside, but also rodents can get inside yeah, those panels. Mice. So, I mean, we may have found where some of the mice had been getting in. If you've seen our episode about our great mouse invasion that we suffered a few years ago, <laughs> those are the kinds of places where mice will find entry into an RV. The belly pan is basically keeping uh, things that uh, we don't want, you know, rodents or moisture, things like that to come inside the trailer. So we install this aluminum sheeting. It's kind of rattling down the road as the wind passes by it. So in time, the rivets that hold this sheeting in place, they kind of wear out and allow for the sheeting to start to fall down. We had an example of that on your trailer and um, just simply getting up there with some rivets or some screws, depending on what you have, will keep that in good shape. Yeah, and it's not just the outside. You need to tighten the inside as well. We have these little pop-up tables in our Airstream, and those needed to be tightened because every day that we're riding down the road, they're just slowly being shaken loose. Even our air conditioning unit on the ceiling of our Airstream, on the roof of our Airstream, we had to tighten that from the inside. Yeah, a lot of what we had done at Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair was all about just maintenance and upkeep. Yeah. All these different steps need to be taken to keep our rig in good mechanical and cosmetic condition. So retorquing your wheels is important, especially if you recently replaced your wheels. You'll see we have 16 inch wheels on this trailer that didn't come stock. So these were installed. Well, here's the way that I do it. I'll actually install the wheel and I'll snug these down in a star pattern. The star pattern is basically tightening from here like this so that we're evenly distributing the pressure on this wheel hub and, uh, and this wheel as they meet. Then what I'll do is I will lower the wheel to where it stops spinning. But I didn't put a lot of pressure on it. I didn't put the whole weight of the trailer on this because maybe these are snugged up to 40 pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to torque these in a star pattern. There's one. Two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm sure that these two mating surfaces between this wheel and this hub are completely compressed evenly. And I didn't cock this wheel in a funny way and torque it down. That's when your wheel's going to come loose. That's why a retorque is so important that these two mating surfaces are perfect and we have evenly distributed the pressure of the lug nuts. Once I've done that, then I can go ahead and lower the trailer and I'm good to go. Finally, inflate. Inflate. Yes, you need to double check your tire pressures and we've probably all been guilty of this from time to time. <laughs> So tire pressure inflation, it's written on the side of the wall here. It says on this particular one, max load for a single 2,680 pounds at 80 PSI. This is a truck tire. A truck tire is going to be used in all kinds of ways. It might be on a school bus. It might be on a uh, dump truck. It could, uh, it, it, it could be on a, an SUV. So you want to depend, it depends on what you're using this vehicle for. In this case, there's a uh, these, these tires require uh, you know, less pressure than max. So what I would do is I would set these to 65 cold on this size trailer. 
they're gonna heat up to about 70 PSI. That's the sweet spot. Uh, if you overinflate these tires and they warm up to say 85 PSI, uh, everything is going to shake up inside. You're gonna loosen those screws. You're gonna pop those rivets. It's unnecessary to run the tires at that kind of inflation rate. So that's it guys. At least five key principles of RV maintenance. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you haven't yet, please click that subscribe button down below and join Loloho Nation. Also, if you haven't yet, click that bell icon so you get notified every time we post a fresh video. Big shout out to Vinny and Cindy Lamica of Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair. Yes. Thanks to Vinny for sharing his expertise with Loloho Nation in this video. Vinny is the man. We can't say it enough. If you saw some products that you liked in this video, be sure to check out our store on Amazon. It's available at amazon.com slash shop slash long, long honeymoon. You know the place. Yep. Be sure to go there. We appreciate it. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Sean. I'm Christy. This is Long, Long Honeymoon, where we say, lo, lo, lo ho. ho. Hal's gonna eat it. Look, I'm gonna give it to Hal. There you go, giving it to Hal. Hal's eating your weed. Oh, um, hard break. It's a good one. Hard break. How do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, that was good. You missed out, Fitz. Could have had that nice weed. Is weed legal in California now? <laughs>